I'm Rooney Mara, and I play Ona Friesen in Women Talking. Yes, she does. I'm Claire Foy, and I play Salome Friesen in Women Talking. We never say our last I names. I know, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> Salome is a very passionate, engaged um, woman. <laughs> she um she doesn't suffer falls she doesn't um pull any punches she's pretty um remarkable in the sense that she, if she sees an injustice she wants to fight it she wants to change it and she wants to change these women and um yeah i love her um ona is sort of uh a little bit of an outsider in in the community she sort of does things in her own way while still having a very strong faith um, she's she's a dreamer. Um, she's an empath, very sensitive, and I think she she's had a little bit more education than the other women, and is just sort of has has a really um, really big consciousness all around. Mm. So, women talking is a story of a devoutly religious community, um, and. Uh, the women of the community have uh, discovered um, that they have been being raped um, continually for a period of years um, by the men of the colony. And this is a conversation that the women are having as representatives of the rest of the colony about how to move forward from this moment, whether they stay and fight, whether they stay and do nothing, or whether they choose to leave and, and start a new colony. Sarah is just, you know, brilliant. She's an incredibly complex, um, layered, brilliant, self-aware human. She's an incredible writer. She's, um, I think she was so thoughtful in so many of the different important um, themes of this story. I think it's things that she'd been thinking about for years and years. And um, she took so much time and care in cultivating the right group of people, not just the cast, but the crew as well, to create this environment where, um, where we could make it in, in a special way. It was dreamy. There was an element of really upping, upping my game, it felt like. Um, but it was amazing to be part of something where everybody was there for the right reasons. Everybody wanted to to be there for Sarah as well, like to support Sarah in her endeavor. Um, that was an amazing feeling that the crew especially, I felt like they were all behind her and this movie and us felt so supported. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a really unique and special experience to be really held by all these people and knowing that we were all there for each other. Every time, you know, you'd catch someone's eye in a scene, everyone was there, everyone was with you. Um, and vice versa. It just, yeah, it was very supportive. One of the things I loved about the book and what I love about the film we made is it's not like declaring anything. It's not making a statement. It's opening doors to conversation. And, and so I, people are going to take lots of various things from it. And that's, I think, what's special about it. I think the women in the film haven't accepted the unacceptable uh, in their own minds. I think that this this conversation comes out of a very critical moment where two of the girls have discovered that this, what they have maybe suspected was happening, is happening. And that happens very quickly. I try and kill them all. And then they get sent to the, the town to, to the, you know, to try and um, decide what to do with them, um, with the perpetrators. But I don't think, I think that we all accept the unacceptable when we're in a society where a group of people are oppressed and there isn't, um, gas equality and on, yeah. gaslit. Yeah, I think that these women have lived in a community where they are supposed to be being, they can't read or write. They've been oppressed for such a long time. Um, and, yeah. you know, they have this catalyst to, to, to co like, to face it. Um, I right. don't think there's anything that they've been naive about or anything they have been ignorant of. I think it's just this has awakened them to it. I know for me it was it was a profound experience. I know I learned so much from it. I don't know that I have the words or like the one thing. I don't know that I have the perspective yet to say the one thing. I mean, I, I know one thing for me it was really it was my first job as a working mom. And so um, I wasn't sure if it was going to be possible to ever work again. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm still not, but it, <laughs> while I was making this, I was like, yeah, it is, it, it is, it might be, it is. So mm. maybe it was that, I don't know. Yeah. I think that's the, the, I think I learned a lot from Sarah um, and all the women in the film um, and the men in the film. And I think that it's been a really interesting, I don't know where I go from here basically with the knowledge that I have from making this film and the way this film was made. Mm. I don't really know what's going to happen next and how that's going to show itself and how it's going to be from the knowledge and of I now know the utopia that can be, <laughs> what making a film can be. Um, yeah. Let's hope it's not a disappointment. It's all I'm <laughs> it's downhill from here. Why does love, the absence of love, the end of love, the need for love, result in so much violence? It was all waiting to happen before it happened. You could look back and follow the breadcrumbs along the path that led to violence. When we looked back, it had been everywhere. It is a part of our faith to forgive. We will be forced to leave the colonies if we do not forgive these men. None of you will listen to reason. We know that we've not imagined these attacks. We know that we are bruised and terrified. Hope for the unknown is good. It is better than hatred of the familiar. And we could not endure any more violence. We have been preyed upon like animals. Maybe we should respond like animals. How would you feel if in your entire life it never mattered what you thought? And we've liberated ourselves. We will have to ask ourselves who we are. You're not really how I imagine an art critic would look. You can't tell me you never wanted to paint. <laughs> Seriously, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Well, I was never a kid. You're one of those. On the wedge. A liar. Yeah. Ever heard of Joseph Cassidy? The art dealer? Mm-hmm. Been invited to his estate. You got rich friends. If you could interview any living artist, who do you think it would be? At the edge of my property, there's a dilapidated little house. In this house, there's an artist. No critic has spoken to this guy in over 50 years. Jerome Debney. It's an honor, Mr. Debney. Think of the splash it would make. See and describe his current work. No, no, no. I cannot abide such things. You could be running a major museum soon. And why would you do this for me? I'd value a deadly James. And I'd like you to procure one for me. What is this about? Redemption, embezzlement and forgery. Kind of underhanded, don't you think? You know what we need to do. Most people are well, not what you'd expect. You know, don't you? I want the truth. <laughs>